G'day guys, Chad here, your resident pit master and backyard barbecue expert. Today I'm back with more tips, tricks and recipes to help you become a real hero around the barbecue and the campsite. So you've decided to delve in to low and slow barbecue. Today I'm going to give you lot a crash course on everything low and slow to give you a leg up in this awesome culinary art. From the different barbecues available to tools, smoking woods, fuels, tips and tricks and everything in between, welcome to Barbecue 101, a beginner's guide to low and slow. Let's get started with choosing your smoker. There are so many cookers on the market and most utilize different methods and levels of experience. There's bullet smokers, cabinet smokers, gas smokers, offset smokers, you've got pellet smokers, hell you can even smoke on a kettle barbecue with the know-how. There's just so many out there right now on the Aussie market. Now if you're a beginner, I do suggest you start with something like our portable smoker. It's an inexpensive unit, you're not throwing your money away for a dead hobby if you don't take to it straight away. Great way to learn your smoke control, it's a great way to learn your oxygen flow, your temperature control. If you can learn to cook on one of these, you can learn to cook on any smoker. Great starting unit, jump on one. Now it's time to think about your fuel source when it comes to barbecuing. Now depending on what type of barbecue you're about to cook on, or the method of cooking you're about to delve into, you will require a different source of fuel. I personally, for smoking low and slow on a smoker, will prefer to use a lump charcoal like so. It always ends with a better result and you get a nice clean flavor and a nice clean heat, along with a nice clean smoke through the cooker, which is super important when it comes to low and slow on the smoker. If I'm using something like a kettle barbecue, I always tend to go towards the briquettes I find them really versatile and easy to use for different methods on the kettle. So when choosing your briquettes, remember to stay away from the easy light stuff. These contain accelerants and can be nasty to cook with, especially with low and slow. Stay with the natural stuff. So remember, these are just tips from me because they work for me. It's always good to experiment with what works best for you. That's what barbecue is all about. Play with your flavors, play with your smoke, play with your fuel. Hook in and have a go. Choosing your smoking wood when starting out with low and slow barbecue can be quite a daunting process. The trick is to keep it super simple. If you're cooking something that's red meat, like a brisket or beef ribs, steak even for that matter, try to stick with the heavier woods like hickory or iron bark. These give off a nice peppery flavor and they've got a really nice long burn time because they're such a hard wood. So these are great ones to start off with for your red meat. If you're cooking something like chicken or pork, white meats always tend to have a little bit of a lighter smoke. I like to use fruit woods, cherry, apple, peach, things like that work really, really well for white meat. So fruit wood for white, darker and heavy woods for your red meats, you can't go wrong. Again, play around with your smoking woods it's all about flavor, it's all about experimentation. The only tip I wanna give you is don't overpower your food with smoke. Use it as a seasoning, just like salt and pepper. Now there are a handful of simple tools you can pick up to really help you along in your low and slow journey. So the first thing we'll start with is a good thermometer. Now a perfect piece to have in your kit just to check the progress of your cook Make sure everything's running along nice and smoothly. Second up is you need to have either some fire lighters or I like to use my fire wand. Fire wand's obviously gonna be a little bit more expensive, but you're gonna get your fire lit in just a matter of seconds compared to about 20 minutes if you're using fire lighters without a fire starter kit. Next up, spritz bottle. Now, We've got to have a spritz bottle for all things low and slow. I usually fill a portion of this with a bit of apple cider vinegar and then beef stock if I'm cooking beef or chicken stock for white meats like pork and chicken. It really does help break down that connective tissue while keeping the cook nice and moist the whole way through. Must have on the list. Next up, a bit of alfoil. Can't go wrong, you need it for your wrapping. 
it will help you stop that dreaded stall. Now that's something that we will delve into in the next episode of Barbecue 101. It's something that will slow down your cook and hold you up for hours and hours if you don't know how to tend to it. Now rather than using a spatula or a pair of tongs to take my final product off the smoker, I like to pair a good set of cotton gloves with a good set of black nitrile gloves over the top to remove anything from the smoker without burning my hands, keeping it nice and pretty to hand over to friends and family to really impress. Celsius versus Fahrenheit. Now I get it, we live in Australia, we use the metric system. But you know what, this art of cooking did not originate here in Australia. This originated in the States and they use Fahrenheit. It's super difficult each time you learn a new recipe to sit down and try and convert everything from Fahrenheit to Celsius. A lot of these recipes being from the States, it's just easier to adapt to Fahrenheit. I also find that it's a much more granular measurement of temperature. So when I'm aiming for a temperature of say 205 Fahrenheit, it's much easier than trying to aim for a measurement of 96.1111 Celsius. Now, as I said, you don't have to all cook in Fahrenheit when it comes to this method of cooking. I find it easier, you may not. Again, personal preference, find what's easy for you. In low and slow barbecue, you'll notice that we use a lot of dry rubs rather than wet marinades per se. Now there's a couple of reasons behind this. One, we like to achieve what's called a nice bark on our cuts of meat. That bark is that really nice dark crust across the outside of your meat that every low and slow barbecuer strives to achieve. Now feel free to use wet marinades if that's more to your preference. Again, that's what it comes down to, personal preference and experimentation. I find wet marinades work really well if I'm doing something like a Sunday roast with a lick of smoke on my smoker. But if I'm doing true low and slow American style barbecue, it's always gonna be a dry rub. Now, if you're cooking something like beef, you wanna aim for something with just a slight salt and pepper, maybe a bit of cayenne, a little bit of heat like some smoked paprika. If you're cooking something like pork, try to go for something a little bit sweeter in there as well. Now you can go out and make these rubs yourself, but try to keep them basic to start with. I like to use pre-made rubs. They're tested, tried and true. You cannot fail with them. Have a play with them before you go out and make your own rubs. Get your basics down first. You can't go wrong. And finally, and most importantly, to yield the best results each and every time, it's best to remember these two sayings. You can't rush perfection. It's done when it's done. And if you're looking, you're not cooking. It's as simple as that. If you're opening your cooker up every couple of minutes, having a look, oh, we done yet, we done yet, you're not cooking anything, you're losing temperatures throughout the smoker, you're gonna give inconsistent temperatures to your meat, things are gonna tighten up, they're not working properly. If you're in a hurry to get everything out on the table because it's time to eat and she'll be right, it's never she'll be right. You're gonna have chewy consistencies, dry cuts of meat, you're not gonna be happy with anything. You're gonna be upset with your cook that you've spent hours and hours and hours on. Make them wait. It's never done when you think it's done. It's done when it's done. Now, barbecue is an art. Don't rush it, but have fun with it. It'll all be worth it when it hits the table and your mates and family have got smiles from ear to ear. And there we have it, folks. Your beginner's guide to low and slow barbecue. For those of you that are getting really super serious and having a good crack, Make sure you hit that subscribe button and click on that bell so you're notified of our next episode so you can yield great results each and every time. For more tips, tricks, and secrets on how to become a backyard barbecue master or a camp cooking legend, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And keep in touch with all things Adventure Kings on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And of course, you can get all the gear at forwarddrivesupercenter.com.au.